thanks to the university for having me back here. Uh, this is my second summit, second consecutive summit, and, and really all that means is that my remarks last year were not entirely rejected, so, uh, so I'm thankful for that. Um, and that said, I had some themes last year. Uh, we had just taken office a few months prior, so I had some themes that I touched on last year. And, um, and so I really am trying to resist a rinse repeat of what I said last year, uh, with the exception of some themes that come to mind. Um, and the overarching theme is, uh, it, my message is always, Alan knows this really well, is that we really we foster and embrace new technology, new mobility solutions, and, uh, and, and we do that, you know, Governor Murphy is the innovation governor for the state, uh, you can't go anywhere without talking about it, and uh, but we, we are hesitant to do that at the expense of current state investments, and the big investment that we talk about in the state is New Jersey Transit. So, um, so ultimately, these things, all of these forms of mobility, uh, they create, you've heard the overused term, uh, an ecosystem, but it's true. Uh, they need to complement one another. And so at the same time, though, public transit and the future of mobility are somewhat in tension with one another. So it's, um, but today, I think what we want to do, what I want to do is uh, talk about the policy lens with which we look through when it comes to all these different technologies and specifically with autonomous vehicles. Um, and I also want to do a call out uh, on what I understand or what we understand public agencies are looking at when we're talking about this area of work. And it's, it's kind of funny to me because uh, I was at USDOT for a while. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, when I was there, uh, I set up Google alerts, like a lot of you, right? To just see what's going on in self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles. And pretty soon, uh, it didn't take long, you're just getting inundated. Uh, reams of information. There's just a lot of information on this stuff because there's so much going on. And... Uh, Cities and states are getting into the game a little bit. Uh, we hope that we're moving in that direction. And certainly, big investments are being made by OEMs, finance, technology companies, startups. Um, but I say all that because with all that big backdrop, I hope I'm speaking for many of you here, um, with all of that information, I still feel like we all still don't know anything, right, yet. Uh, because this is so far out there. Um, and so, as mentioned, I, I worked at USDOT uh, from 2009 to 2017. Uh, I was with the Obama administration, and so I had two bosses during that time, uh, as did some others in the audience here, uh, Secretary uh, LaHood and Secretary Fox. Um, and that's when this technology was in its infancy. It's as though in between the DARPA challenge and the billions of dollars that you see exchanging today, there was this pit stop that, that autonomous vehicles made at USDOT. Um, it permeated all of the different modes, but it mostly sat with uh, National Highway Traffic Safety, uh, NHTSA. And, uh, and so we had a chance to, um, to expose ourselves to this. I still remember in 2013, I took a ride in a Toyota Yaris that was all tricked out with the LiDAR spinning on the top. You can only imagine, two guys in a car and a laptop. Um, and we took that thing for a ride out on the Beltway in the rain. Uh, so you can understand uh, how nervous I felt doing that uh, at that period. Um, but I was also uh, privileged, right? I, I had the opportunity to go with each of the secretaries to Mountain View to, to Google's campus and uh, you know get to ride around in the Google Firefly. So we've had an opportunity to see the various iterations of this technology, and it's been really exciting. And I think when we did that, Secretary Fox in particular, he, he was all in all of a sudden. You know, he wanted to, to put this stuff on the table for a $40 million smart cities grant, uh, where uh, AVs were one of 12 vision areas that you could apply to. Uh, he wanted to set up an advisory committee uh, to tell him more about like the ins and outs of the of automated transportation and um, and really inform our approach and there were some big names on that on the way out John Krafchick was a part of that uh, and, and he got everybody on board so John Krafchick was a part of that Sully Solenberger was a part of that Mary Barr was a part of that 
uh, John Zimmer from, from Lyft, and, uh, and one of the esteemed participants here, uh, Brian Walker-Smith, was also on that, on that team. Um, and that was as we were leaving. Uh, we also put out a first of its kind AV guidance, which I, I'm happy that the next administration has refreshed multiple times at this stage. We thought that that was a good way to invite industry, almost like in an open source manner, with safety uh, above everything else, uh, getting us the information that we needed to make some policy decisions, to make investment decisions, uh, to make regulatory decisions, and then finally, uh, setting up proving grounds, designating 10 proving grounds throughout the country. Uh, that was an important move, uh, we felt, because part of that required the applicant to participate in a community of practice, right? So we felt like we were, in essence, creating an, uh, an internal to external uh, feedback loop back to us. So, you know, we'll give you the designation, we'll be in touch with you, but we want to know what we can know without getting into your proprietary business about all the safety aspects. Um, and you'll be part of this designated group. And so, um, but the reality is that there are a lot of uncertain outcomes awaiting all of us when it comes to this technology. Uh, you know, depending on your point of view, and I think many of uh, the different workshops over the last few days have touched on aspects of this, but depending on your point of view, right, uh, the policy in the future is that the robots are going to take over, and they're going to take your job, they're going to run you over, and that's the, that's the scenario on one side. And on the other side, it's, you know, hey, we've got all these garages and parking lots, and just think about what we can do in terms of green space and density and affordable housing, uh, what we can build. And so that there, you know, two, two ends of a, of a spectrum. Uh, or, you know, we're going to have uh, ghost cars drive us to work and then circle the block all day until we have to get picked up, and then we're going to get a ride home. Look at you split. So that's why I say, you know, the, the future is uncertain. And for every future reality, there's almost this equal and opposite uh, reality predicted for what's to come. Uh, in, in January of 2018, I participated in, it's a very cool um, experience uh, called Transportation Camp. You may have heard of Transportation Camp. Uh, these have kind of proliferated across the country. It's a very organic, almost academic way of, of piling a bunch of transportation geeks together where you map out the day's activities, right? Like, so in Princeton, we would reserve all these rooms and all the geeks would come out and there would be just an empty agenda for the day. And you start to pitch your ideas on what it is that you want to teach, right? So you can make yourself a teacher, you can co-teach. And so I had the opportunity to do that in DC in 2018. And, um, and the whole theme of our session, uh, I think it was not even 90 minutes, was called Guess the Year. It was Guess the Year that uh, AVs were going to deploy, right? And, and then there's a fundamental question about, well, what is deployment, uh, right? How do you define that? And, um, and it was really incredible. Uh, I think we had, imagine, uh, 50 big self-driving nerds crammed into a room trying to think about, okay, well, is it 2018 that we're going to deploy, or is it like 2025 or 2030? And, um, and I'm going to show you here uh, a document that was created in real time as all of this discussion was happening. Um, and I'm not going to run through all of this. This is a crazy uh, sort of a spider relationship diagram here of, um, of what we talked about. And in the top right, I'll just sort of draw your attention if you can sort of see. Uh, we did some quick um, scan of uh, what are, what's the market saying, right? So here you've got a timeline from 2017 to 2040. Depending on who you are, that's when you're going to deploy and proliferate. Uh, but you know, you can see as you scan all the way around, uh, we touched on all these themes, different policies, what the challenges are. Uh, you know, the challenges. I think everybody here knows the challenges. What we were trying to do is really agree, get consensus around, like backing our way into what's the year. And we talked about technology. Technology needs to continue to perfect. Uh, we talked about uh, regulations and legal and, and what do you know, policy at the local levels, at the state levels, need to look like. 
uh, to get to a, a good place. How about risk and liability, and what's the insurance scheme, and, and how is law enforcement going to interact with this? Uh, so we went around and around, and uh, we were really racing by the end of the program uh, to come up with each of these areas and saying, okay, so what are we going to solve the policy question? Okay, let's agree seven years. Okay, the insurance question, the legal question, the technology question, land use. Uh, and, and it was a really great organic experience, but, but you know, one that was ripe for some cold water to be thrown on it because at the end of this, we said, okay, we all agree it's going to be about seven or eight years from now before we see you know, shared autonomous you know, in, in, the, in the environment. And uh, the cold water came from a guy in the back of the room who raised his hand and said, this has all been good and fine. I've been watching what you guys are doing here, but I'm a senior VP with an Uber, and I'm going to let you know that we've been around for seven years, and we have 15% market penetration, and that's in the big, you know, with the big cities. And so it really allowed us all to go, oh, okay. Like, so in the end, we really were a bunch of like spun-up geeks that couldn't wait to see the Ollie or the Uber that's going to sell truck, whatever it is, um, uh, hit the roads. Uh, so there is a little bit of like a reality check when you think about when, is, when are these things going to come to market. Uh, and I can share this and leave this and give this over to the professor. It's actually really kind of me. So, uh, so that was the transportation camp experience. So the, the question, I think, you know, I tried to, in preparation for this, try to put myself in, in your spots and thinking about what it is that maybe you want to hear me say. Uh, you know, what is the public sector doing? And uh, I think um, some of the folks that we've had here from the state side kind of touched on this. I know Bob mentioned this yesterday. Uh, but in this past year, the governor has formed a team to examine how we can become a smarter state. So we competed against a whole bunch of other states uh, to go do this thing with the National Governors Association. We won the competition. Uh, we were one of five selected states to think about how it is that we're going to become smarter in the state of New Jersey. And, and why this matters, because we focus on bringing innovation to roads and modernizing our energy grid and our energy infrastructure. Uh, how are we going to do that? I mean, if AVs are projected to, and this number shifts, so forgive me if I'm not on it, um, but if AVs are, are expected to process four terabytes of information in the vehicle um, while connecting to enabled surrounding infrastructure, uh, then we'll need to innovate our roads and our grid system pretty, pretty rapidly as a sort of a precursor. Uh, but we've staked ourselves also to um, increasing zero emission vehicles. Um, today, there's about 18,000 registered EVs. Uh, we, we've said by the year 2025, we want to have 330,000 in New Jersey, and that's kind of a hockey stick if you think about it. Uh, and so why does that matter? You're going, well, that's EVs, and we're here to talk about EVs. Well, if you believe in the case approach, the connected, autonomous, shared, electric, then the electric part has to be a piece of that, and so we're already starting to try and lay the groundwork a little bit on this. Uh, to, you know, we believe that case is the optimal path forward, and so we're pushing on electrification. Um, we've organized an internal-facing interagency group to discuss and identify opportunities in the state uh, with regard to advanced, connected, and autonomous uh, vehicle deployment. So basically, we got here, we didn't want to assume that, like, people have been thinking about this for a while, and, and the agencies are doing a whole bunch of stuff on this. We also didn't want to assume they've done nothing on it. So we started to assemble as a group to share ideas and to, you know, hopefully get to a pilot or get to a deployment or get to a project. And so we continue to go through those, those conversations. Um, and then in mid-March, the governor signed uh, legislation to enable an advanced autonomous vehicle task force. Uh, and so we felt like that was a, another sign to, to the market here that you know, as long as we can study study this and determine that you know our roads can maintain safety, uh, we want to move forward with that too. And it's not only been a local effort, but it's also been a global effort. Uh, the the governor has already done a world tour once to try and attract businesses uh, to the state of New Jersey. He was in Germany. He was in Israel. And um, in, in Israel, he met with AV makers, uh, cybersecurity, you know, for vehicle companies. Uh, so, so he's he's definitely um, 
trying to do his part in that regard, but he also has our DEA working to, uh, to attract new companies to New Jersey. Because, compared to other states, uh, we have the most engineers per square mile. Uh, and you've heard recently the news, as we compare to other states, we also lose the most millennials. Uh, they get the skills in places like uh, NJIT and Rutgers and here in Princeton, and then they take their wares to Mountain View and Silicon Valley and Ann Arbor and all these other places, uh, you know, Carnegie Mellon, just to go and do this stuff. So, so we need to try and retain that talent here uh, because that's important. Uh, we feel like technology, this technology is a natural fit for, for the state. Um, and and it's, it speaks to us, it's like kind of in our makeup and in our inventive history. Uh, so now the other thing I want to just mention on is, is talk about is um, what the public sector is looking for. Uh, and, and I'll sort of say, this is my thinking of how we will engage as a state, what are we looking to do, what are we looking for. So we want to continue to be supportive, and, and we've reached out to the universities, uh, we had some really great conversations, we've had continued conversations with Alan, uh, his coalition carts, um, and, and I think we want to also engage the companies that can bring a good use case to the state, uh, because the use cases are going to be the deployments, right? So um, what we've learned in this past year is in order to lean in or to look at the state barriers, we need to first answer two threshold questions, right? So what's the good use case for us to get behind? And then we also need a very willing local partner uh, to do this. And, um, and we've, we've come close. Uh, but we need to be certain, right? So what is it that we're solving for? What's the problem that we're solving for, right? The problem isn't the guy who wants to own the AV, his personal AV, and he wants to get to work faster than everybody else. That's, you know, it, you've heard it before, but our overarching message is stronger, fairer. Um, and, and I think that resonates well with uh, CART's message of trying to uh, help the mobility disadvantage, trying to provide mobility with mobility disadvantage. And then, is the municipality or the county behind it? Um, and that's a, kind of another threshold question, because we can do these things in controlled environments, we can drive them around the, the track at the, the football stadium, or do it on a military base maybe, but if we want to get out on the open roads, there's a reality check. Uh, in the state of New Jersey uh, with regard to uh, local authority and local, local empowerment. We need to be mindful of that. So when the communities come to us, right, and this is even more granular than a municipality, but it's at the community level. When the community informs the municipality and says, we really are okay with this, we really want this technology, and then the municipality says, we have a good use case for this, we want, we want state partnership, um, then I think those are two boxes that you really want to try and check. Um, and so, does the deployment resonate with us? So, you know, the, the case, the use case I'll say is, you know, if you have a, an, L, an L5 uh, autonomous vehicle, uh, get, you know, we want to have a project where it like creates basically an HOV lane, right, because it's autonomous, and everybody else is stuck in traffic. Or do we want to get behind a project that's more like a shared autonomous you know, bus or shuttle that, that augments the customer experience with, a, with regard to our transit system. I think we know which one we would get behind more than the other. So, um, but then depending on how the deployment may involve state laws and regulations, uh, we would work with the agencies to examine uh, with those specific use cases in mind. And, um, and that's why I'm so glad that uh, MVC is, is in the house here. Uh, because that shows you that that's where a lot of the regs live, and and, um, and so we're willing to take a look at that. Uh, but these are the general areas that aspiring deployers need to keep in mind as you're thinking about how you're going to release this here in the state. And then we'll have a big meeting. So, uh, but you know, I understand that there's a lot of cold water being thrown on people, and, and um, you know, there's a lot of uh, aspiration, not perspiration, some of that too, but aspiration in the room to do these things. Um, I, I hope that they're not taken as cold water and rather as, you know, constructive words of, of encouragement. But what I do know is that there is no time, like right now, to be in transportation. Uh, I've been doing it personally for like 15-ish years. 
And there was a day where all we talked about was like roads, bridges, roads, bridges, capital projects, capital program. Uh, but now we've got all of these new technologies coming online. Um, we've got shared scooters that we actually just signed into legislation, right? And uh, we, we've got personal mobility. We've got apps on your phone, right? We're talk, starting to talk about things not in terms of modes, like what car ride am I going to take, what train ride am I going to take, but a trip. It's a door-to-door -door experience now. So there's no time like now to be in transportation. Uh, there is no time like now to be at the forefront of computing and engineering and to be around this stuff. Uh, I think DARPA was a really great seed that was planted to get us to, to this point today. Um, and certainly, you know, robotics today is different than when I was playing with my Radio Shack Armatron back when I was a kid. Uh, but all that is cause for optimism in the state. And, um, and with that, I want to thank you for having me back here. I want to thank you. Maybe next year I, I'll get an invitation again, if I haven't offended too many. Um, enjoy the rest of the program. Uh, it's a great program. And if you have questions, I'm happy to try and answer some of those. All right. I saw a hand in the... I, yep, I saw that first. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it's, um, well, yeah, the question was the difference between New Jersey and California, why can't New Jersey be like California? And, um, and I think it's, it's a very complicated answer, and I think we all know bits and pieces of it. Sure. Um, you need a political will to go and do these things. You need to, I touched on it, it's not just you know, word. But, uh, you need to have the talent in the state to actually want to do this stuff too. So, um, so you know, it's it's kind of a boon to have Mountain View and Silicon Valley and all that just kind of there as like a, as an, an attraction for young talent. Um, so I think you need to have the talent. You need to have the political will. And then you do need to also have a different level of enablement with regard to the rules of the road. And, and that's certainly something that we're taking a look at is, you know, what is it that maybe we can do or what is it that we can't do without legislation? Uh, so I think once you have a mix of those three, you can just start to do stuff. Uh, we were all at the same table eating just a few moments ago. And, um, you know, there's also a reality in kind of like the community wanting this uh, because it will, it will end pretty quickly if you have a NIMBY group that just says, that's great. Go do it in South Jersey. We don't want it up here. Or vice versa. Uh, in which case, you then start to wonder, like, are we losing our competitive edge as a state? Right? Are we just ceding everything for New York City and for Philly to take a shot at it and for DC to do some pilots and deployments? So I think there's a there's a mix of those things and then it granulates from there. I think the last thing I'll say too is that California, I think, has because of its um its uh its um you know, what it, its inventive nature and, and sort of the entrepreneurialship there is their finance. There's a lot of like finance and a lot of funding and a lot of um, resources that California can throw at things. And it's not the same thing, but you know, I talk a lot about like electric vehicles and geez, I just wish that we had what they have when it comes to the resources to actually proliferate EVs. Uh, we don't have that. We're trying to figure that out. There was a question behind Michael, I think. Uh, you talk about use cases. Does the state have use cases you're looking for answers for, or are you looking for people to bring you? I, I, I think it's more the latter. I think that you know because of right, like I don't want to say blue laws and, and local control and um, and uh, you know home rule, but you know we're not in the best position to say, hey, guess what? We're going to do a downtown Trenton today. We're gonna we're gonna do an autonomous vehicle doing a loop. Like we need we really do need the groundswell to come up and to propose to us um, a use case. Are and you, are you reaching out to try to get some of those? Because we're 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 willing to listen. And that, I think there's gotta be some like, yeah. given yeah. the past administration. Yeah. Do people even know what that you're looking for use cases? Yeah, I would say that and and, and Alan is probably testament to this is you know, um, him and his team, uh, with 
have been thinking about what the use case is, right? And with this, with this overarching message of bringing mobility to the mobility disadvantage, right? Um, that's a really good start, right? Off the bat, we're speaking the same language. Um, and then it becomes the next click down as to like, okay, so what's the volume like? What are the what are the headwinds? What are the challenges? But we, we do definitely need, I think, the municipality or the town or the county to say, we're all in on this. Uh, and we need to be convinced of that, to be frank. Uh, we have a lot going on, so we, you know, I don't want to say we're too busy. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if we're going to put some some will and capital and all that other stuff behind this, we want to see a fairly baked idea. Matt? So just to follow up with that then is, um, did New Jersey put any uh, proposal in for the 60 million ADS program? And if, if, if they did, can you talk to the scope or? No, we did not. We did not. And, um, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so if you if you look at it from the state, yeah, the cop from the okay. state university, okay. yes. Uh, and I, I can't really speak to that. Uh, I think that those decisions haven't been made. The the awards. Right, right. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable explaining any of that until they say it's okay. But but I mean that's just a, a way of saying we are looking and tracking uh, federal resources and. I think we, we also were looking and tracking federal resources through the coalition here. Um, and you know, I think we're gonna get it at some point. We're gonna we're gonna get the use case, we're gonna get the right people around the table. Uh, and certainly the signals that I told you about, the, the task force, all these other elements, those are things, as you and I know, like we both you know, full disclosure, Matt and I have prior life at USDOT. Uh, so so we have to some degree, we know what those guys look for when they make these awards. So, you know, it's it's one thing if you just submit something on paper, but we always would go through this exercise of like, okay, so what's happening in the market there? What's happening in the region? Because if all the signals are nothing, then you're not going to get the award. Yeah, if I, we did make a, an attempt to put one together, we were just, uh, I think uh, we were late in putting all the dots together. We wanted to put a, a, a proposal together that had a very high probability of winning. And uh, we basically ran out of time. Uh, we got a lot of people signed up and, and oriented, and, uh, but we ran out of time on it. And uh, we're, I think it just tells us that, uh, again, bringing a, finding a community who is welcoming of this is to me, as, as uh, Ben has mentioned, is the most important piece. I think it has, I agree with him, it has to come from the grassroots. It'd be great to have the governor lead and tell everybody what to do, but as we all saw with the Amazon uh, HQ2 in, in Queens, uh, uh, we all saw. Uh, and they won. They won and then they lost. Yeah, they right. won and they lost because so really, uh, it's the opportunity. I know there are some communities here, but we really need to work at the community level <coughs> and, and, and really get a true uh, appreciation for this. And I think for that, I think the top is waiting to support that effort and take it forward. Uh, and, and if we look at what we're trying to create, we're trying to create mobility for a community. We're not looking at solving the whole New Jersey problem. We're not solving, you know, this is this is grassroots, and that's where we really need to be. Exactly, and it takes time. We were also talking today about um, two summers ago, uh, the state of Rhode Island put out a request for information because they wanted to learn more about this stuff. That's usually a really good way to start a process. I find, um, because you're not under any kind of restriction as it relates to an RFP. Uh, it's just sort of like, hey, what's going on in the market, and what are your ideas, and if we, if we think we want to do some of this stuff, tell us more about how we would go about sequencing the steps to do that. Uh, that was two, two summers ago, they did the RFI, and they finally launched their little roadie uh, shuttle, or autonomous vehicle, yesterday. So, um, you know, there's a lot. And, and with the driver, with the driver, um, and we were kind of joking because that 
the news headline was a police officer pulled it over in the first seven hours. Uh, but, but, you know, these are like kind of your reality, right? Like, we we're, we're all grew up and dream and think about Jetsons, but, you know, there's a reality. Uh, the other thing, too, is um, we, we talked about that I thought was interesting and noteworthy. It was just uh, when we went from that 13-year period where, uh, and I didn't bring the image with me, I have it, but it's the whole, like, um, Fifth Avenue, like in 1907, Fifth Avenue in 1918 to 20. And like one, one picture of Fifth Avenue, black and white, has one car surrounded by all of these horses. And then the other picture is one horse surrounded by all the cars. Uh, but even that was, a, that was a transitionary period. And we talked about with regard to the community, there were probably communities that said, get that thing off of my dirt road. You're scaring all my horses, right? So there's a reality when it comes to what the community is willing to, to go along with. I'm a believer that if the, 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 the safety aspects are there, right, and that's told, right, that we, that's registered and told. Uh, I told you about how I was in a, uh, a Toyota Yaris, and the one thing I, I remember I tell everybody was um, the guy next to me in, on the laptop was showing me the shapes of the cars all around me, and you can almost create your own story with these shapes. They'd get close to your car, and then the car would go faster. Or somebody would start to lean back and almost cut you off, and the car would pull back. It's sort of like autopilot today. You've seen the videos of uh, Tesla autopilot. You can see somebody putting on their makeup over here, and somebody eating a cheeseburger back there, and somebody on their phone over here. Um, so it, that told me that there's real potential in the safety aspect of this. But I think what's really going to create um, traction uh, hit the tipping point is when people see and touch these things, and then they get in there and they get on their phones and they realize, like, I don't need to even pay attention to the road that much, and I can just check my Facebook or whatever. So I think convenience is going to be the other part that plays in, in all of the, you know, how this proliferates. Any other questions? It's one more. Are we uh, ready to do the workshops? We're only 20 minutes late, man. We're Let's do some workshops. Let's do some all right. Workshops. Thank you, everyone.